Hi everybody! Alright, I'm gonna do a miniature recap on that April channeling that I did the other day. Super long video and it was really strange for me to experience because of all of the explorations of disconnect. So I've been in a state of just thinking about what Spirit shared and thinking about the balance of humanity, thinking about what they shared about balance in general. And I kind of wanted to just do a mini recap on it all to just sort of push all of that 60 minutes into something small that we can all digest really simply and easily. So what happened in my April channeling? Let's just go over it again. There were distinctive, um, it was a distinctive exploration about elements, the elements of air. So making sure that you're taking the time this month to, to, to breathe, okay? To take the time to relax and to just breathe, all right? Because when we get overwhelmed with things, usually we go into the brain region and then we think and we think and we think and we get kind of our cages rattled and now we're getting emotionally connected to things. But if we just stop thinking and just step back from feeling all that whirlwind energy, too much air energy, too much tornado energy, then we just go into a state of peacefulness. We take the time to breathe, okay? And actually take the time to breathe in nature. So you're breathing in really pure, fresh air. And you're making that one-on-one -on -one time with Mother Earth because she wants to have that bond with you. She feels, she feels a disconnect when we don't take the time to heal with her. She senses what's going on in our lives, each and every one of us. She senses it. Just like she knows what's going on with each and every tree on the planet. Just like she knows what's going on with the stars and planets beyond this one. She is totally connected to every single thing. We are totally connected to every single thing. The difference between Mother Earth's connection and our connection is we get, we don't feel, we feel sort of the human consciousness experience. We feel a finite reality. We feel a world that is that we would like to define as black and white, right? It makes things simpler. And so when life gets too confusing, then the too much error and then the tornado-iness, when we need to just alter our experience with the tornado version of error and go into a state of breathing and being in a state of peacefulness. So that was part of the message, right? Talking about the element of air. Not so much in this way, because I've been thinking about all this stuff a lot, so I'm just sort of adding to the video, but thinking about, about what was shared, so exploring air. Also exploring water as a way um, to heal as well. And in the video we talk, we, there's a meditation, um, we talk, uh, talk about how... How can you go into a state of meditation that is actually effective for you? Because a lot of us, when we think about meditation, we think about just laying down, closing our eyes, and just sort of shutting off, right? We want to make connections with the spirit realm. We want to make connections with Mother Earth. We want to make connections with our spirit guides, all that stuff. So what do we do? And we go lay down, we close our eyes, we relax. Maybe you're able to actually hold the proper position you know, just sit up straight and hold it. <laughs> Maybe a perfect posture and you actually can do that and, you know, sit up like Buddha. <laughs> and maybe you can enter into a peaceful, relaxed, and harmonized state like that. It's really amazing. But for most average Joes, we just need to lay down and close our eyes and try and de-stress that way. But we take that technique a step further in the super long video and we talk about how you actually enter into a peaceful place inside your own mind. That's part, that's what you need to add into your meditation. And we work with water and we work with breathing. And then we also work with the sort of Mother Earth scenes, right? In order to enter into a place in your imagination, you actually just relax, close your eyes. What is the, what is the one place you would really like to be right now? Maybe you want to be with your kids right now. Maybe you want to be in the mountains right now. Maybe you want to be scuba diving right now. I don't know what it is. But you just close your eyes and through the April channeled video, we explored being in sort of a wooded place where it's just you 
you're just relaxing down on the ground. There's water and um, a sort of babbling brook. And then there's fresh air that you're breathing. And you're hearing the sounds of nature. You're actually touching the ground. What does the ground feel like? Is it dusty? Is it dirty? You know, is it grassy? You know, are there bugs on the ground? What temperature is the air? Can you feel the wind um, rushing across your face? Or maybe there's no wind at all. Is there sun in the sky? Maybe it's shadowy because there's lots of trees. What do the trees look like? You actually start taking the time to enter into a scene that is as real as real life, as you experience real life. You feel it, you breathe it, you hear it, you smell it. You become one with it in here. So you do that in your meditation. That is a part of the April wisdom. That is part of what April is asking you and me and all of us to do. Take the time to connect with earthiness. Take the time to connect with inhaling, relaxing, being at peace. Take the time to meditate in new ways. Ways that help you to feel connected with the earth. Ways that help you to feel connected with harmony. Energies that make you feel really just like you took a vacation from life, right? But in nature. Um, or with those that you love. Maybe you're in love with somebody who lives far away from you and you you want to feel close to them. You can. You just go into a, a relaxed place within yourself and you daydream about them and now you feel their touch now you hear their breathing now you hear their heartbeat now you feel their warmth now you feel their love holding you and you holding them back now you feel that 15 minutes later you're going to realize how how much better you feel and how badly you needed that and how you need to do this every single day so that was part of the April wisdom. These, these portions come in the very beginning. There's a long section that was just very odd for me, mainly because the images they kept showing me were literally hands strangling necks and really fiery temper tantrums and lots of pent up anger and frustration just blasting out and the need to just, you know, I mean, I'm hearing cuss words, I'm hearing swear words, I'm hearing feeling anger, I feel like I need to choke somebody, I feel like I need to punch somebody in the face, feeling all this stuff, and I'm trying to be like a Care Bear about it, and like really super nicey-nice about it, when really in the background of it, I'm just like, ur, 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 like all this crazy energy, right? And so that was part of April wisdom as well. I don't know if there's going to be some cages rattled this month or maybe um, there's some other element um, about this that we need to start asking ourselves what is the deeper reason for why we are reacting and responding like we are to things. It's easy for us to feel vulnerable to the challenges in life because challenges make us become better. How do we get better? Eventually, we have to embrace the challenge, love the challenge, and find our inner strength and face the challenge and now move on from it and be done with it already. Or we can linger in the challenge for years and years and years of our life, move into the next lifetime, get to continue to work on the challenge, or we could say, you know what? The reality is I feel inadequate and that's why I'm getting so mad about this or reality is I'm actually just mad because I'm tired and you know I, I guess I thought there was something more to this than there really has ever proven to be and I need to you know acknowledge the reality of it and stop getting mad about it and I need to to explore ways that I can I can heal myself from the inside and move on. This is part of the message, is exploring our emotional reactions to things. And they show this on the fiery side. So we really talk about the elements in this video, not so much directly, but they're definitely there. They're definitely explored in this video. And so we have this sort of coiling dragon in the super long video, and I'm just trying to shorten it. But the coiled dragon sort of keeps putting its own head and neck into knots and and it's just so angry. It's just so angry. And so again, spirit is talking about what is what are you balanced with? Are you balanced with anger 
or you balance with peacefulness because you're never in ba- you're not in it nobody nothing is in a state of imbalance nothing is in a state of imbalance we call it imbalance that's not true we actually are in a state of balance all the time totally in a state of balance but what are we in balance with that's the question are you in balance with anger and that's why the anger is just out of control are you in balance with feeling depressed are you in balance with feeling confusion and I just don't know how to put my finger on what's wrong and I, ju- I need to figure this out but I've never in my life been able to get past this. You have to ask yourself these questions. They want you to go deeper. They show what is like a wound developing, a wound in Mother Earth, but it was also sort of like our own wounds and a really deep, heavy baggage coming out of the ground of a very peaceful space, right? Coming up and out. And there's such a terrible experience for me of just a total, like a mind-boggling, disconnected nightmare of confusion and anger and I need to punch somebody in the face and then I just want to be peaceful and I just want things to make sense and nobody understands me and I have people in my life but I really can't ask them for help or I'm asking them for help and we're not on the same page and it was just like this and it was just like this and then just like this ah! you see what I mean this is the April wisdom <laughs> what are we going to do with this giant conglomeration of ah we're going to either choose to be in balance with ah or we're going to choose to be in balance with, I'm just going to stop now and I'm going to relax and I'm going to breathe and I'm actually going to try this thing, this meditation thing. I'm going to actually try this. I'm going to lay down. Okay, I'm laying down. All right, I'm going to pretend now I'm a child now. You got to access the inner child within you. It's amazing how wise the inner child is. Inner child is creative. Inner child is imaginative. Inner child dreams big. Inner child wants to show how awesome inner child is. We all want to show how awesome we are, right? Or have we lost that part of ourselves because now we're adults and we're in the system and um, we don't feel awesome ever. (laughs) The world does not make us feel awesome all the time. So we have to, to say that we are awesome again. We have to start wanting to show how good we are at things. We have to start wanting to show ourselves to this world and really promote our hobbies and our talents and our dreams again. We really need to start doing this stuff again because that is when we are in balance with our joy, not in balance with uh, an illusion that, you know, of muckety muck, <laughs> the misery. I don't know. We in balance. Are we in balance with misery? Are we in balance with joy and passion and inspiration? You choose. You choose it. Okay. If you're not sure how to choose to be happy, you got to work on that. You got to actually say, okay, I don't feel like I'm ever going to be happy. Don't have a freaking clue how to be happy. Okay, you're going to stop right there. You're already coming up with a million and one excuses for why you cannot choose to be happy. So stop that. You need to just stop it. I'm going to just slice that old dirty butter off of this, the plate here. And we're going to start with new butter. And the new butter is... I'm going to choose to be happy right now. I'm just going to choose to be happy and I'm going to allow spirit to inspire the balance of happiness in my life. So now we we are talking about right air and water and fire and earth and we're talking about spirit too. Because spirit's a big part of the message. Allowing ourselves to get out of the ah moments. Separate completely through connecting with with the elements and choosing harmonization and peacefulness and knowing that spirit already knows all this stuff. Spirit already has this. Whether you can see the spirit realm, hear your spirit guides or not, you have to choose to trust, right? The spiritual journey is about trust. So it's about trust because it's hard to see a spirit realm. It's hard to understand an infinite universe when you come from a finite human mind. How do we comprehend an infinite universe when we choose to think linearly about everything? When we choose to put logic and science before we choose to put creativity and heart energy and true wisdom that comes from love. Does the true wisdom come from love or does it truly come from your mind? What you need to answer that question. For me... 
for everything I've learned, for everything I've explored, for everything I've discovered, true wisdom always comes from love because love is the most infinite energetic force in the entire universe. Love is the most creative force. Love is passionate. Love is inspiring. Love has no boundaries. Love has no definition. Love has many faces of many colors and so much diversity and so many different ideas and different ways of expressing itself. Logic needs a calculation. Logic needs, it needs lots of examples and it needs a pattern that it can follow in order to comprehend itself because the universe has to be in a state of a pattern in order to make sense. If it's not in a state of a pattern, how are we ever going to make sense of it? We need the sun to come up in the morning, sun to go down at this time, and the moon to come up. We need to calculate the rhythm and the routine of movements of the planets and the stars and the way things work. That's the mind. That's as far as the mind will ever go. Can't comprehend anomalies. It can't freaks out. Does not compute. It's like Futurama, you know, with the robots. You just need them to not compute and then their head explodes. We get that way too. It's like, okay... Um, I've been in a relationship for 10 years. My partner is saying they don't love me anymore. Oh my God, oh my God, I don't know what to do. This <laughs> explosion in the brain <laughs> does not compute. But love, on the other hand, would say, you know what, I love you so much that I'm, you know, that if it's time for us to move on from each other, I am welcoming of this change. And I'm going to welcome love into my life in new ways, love that is balanced. Because if our love isn't balanced anymore, then we need to move on. And it's actually a really good thing. And I'm so glad that you finally told me this because I don't want us to be um, trying to create balance with each other if the love balance isn't right. You see the difference between what the mind can provide and what love can provide? Love can provide understanding. Love is non-judgmental. Love is open-minded to everything. Love is creative. Love is infinite. Love does it has no boundaries, you see? So what is wiser, the mind or is love wiser? So the heart, the mind or the heart, what do you choose? April talks a lot about how to let go of too many emotions and choosing the peaceful side of things and to allow yourself to just take this googly book of ah experience and too much crazy and feelings of disconnect and I don't know and I want to strangle somebody and my temper is getting out of control and I cannot get myself into it was oh a chaotic overwhelming nightmare for me <laughs> and I'm treating it like a care bear you'll see if you watch the video but anyway you take that Take this giant knot ball and then you hand it to spirit and you trust that they have this thing. You don't have a freaking clue how they have it because you definitely don't have it. But I, all I know is Abby said, April wisdom is for me to just breathe and to just clear my head, to let go of stress and just relax and enjoy nature and, and make a real deep nurturing connection with Mother Earth who does not want to feel dis the disconnects that you feel from her with her. Because how many of us actually take the time to connect with her every day and she connects with us every single day? So when we're not connecting back, we need to be, right? We need to nurture our relationship with Mother Earth because she loves us that much that she misses us. <laughs> she misses us big time and she wants us to heal with her. That brings her so much joy inside her heart when we choose to heal with her, when we choose to open up to her with all of our problems and our confusions, when we allow her to just be the air that we inhale, be the sounds of water flowing, be a part of the healing energy of the universe, then we just choose to let go and allow spirit to guide our pathway and know our pathway is being guided perfectly. So this is my super mini rendition of April Wisdom. This has been on my mind. This April Wisdom has been on my mind. And I just like, I got to make another video to talk about this because it was just, it was just the oddest experience for me. There was also in that super long video, a very strange energy that enters in. Um, it's got a very alien sort of energetic language to it. So what's energy language? When I communicate with other human beings, um, when I do energy work for other human beings, we're on the same energy language because we're all of the same D type of DNA. We're all the same energy language. But if I were to talk to alien beings, for instance, it can be very complicated because I, I, don't, I understand based on energetic language. So when the energetic language is not on the same page as my own, it's um, like trying to make sense of a foreign language. 
um, here on earth. I speak English. I don't know Chinese. <laughs> I don't know any other languages. <laughs> so I'm sorry I do not understand you, even though we're humans. I, I understand what smile is. I understand what frown is. I understand what anger, you know, looks like in our body language. But when it comes to understanding the definition of the language itself, I just, I wouldn't understand English, right? <laughs> but when it comes to energy language, it's different too. It's different for all species as well. Like I can, I can connect with the raven, for instance, and explore, do a journey, like exploration, a spiritual um, learning of their energy vibrations. And then it's very different than what it's like to connect with a human being, you know? It's very different than what it's like to connect to the spirit realm, is the spirit realm already understands me, so they already know how to work with my energy language in order to get the point across, so it's really easy for me to, to talk to spirit, it's really easy. But alien beings talk in a different energy language, so that can be a little more complicated. <laughs> but there is a strange energy that came in that was like an alien energy, and the alien energy was I had an understanding, a higher understanding of everything going on. Whereas everything going on just felt so scatterbrained, like a, like a bomb just went off in the head and I do not even know who I am, I don't know where I am, I don't know why this is happening to me, I'm so confused. <laughs> but the alien energy got it for some reason. <laughs> but that too tells me that um, there may be some people this month having um, some higher sort of vibrational experiences, even spirit, um, maybe alien, I don't know. But ones that seem out of the out of the norm, you know, out of the nor off the be you know off the pathway of your normal, and it could be kind of confusing and hard to put your finger on what is this and why is this happening and I do not know what this means, but that did enter into April wisdom, so I wanted to kind of describe that a little bit in more detail than I did in the channeling. Anyway, 21 minutes, mini rendition of a 60-minute video. I tried. I was hoping I could get it to like 5 to 10 minutes, but I, I'm i just too, I'm just, I talk too much. So I, <laughs> this is my attempt to shorten things. All right, I'm done. I'm done. Seriously done. All right. Um, I hope you enjoyed this recap of that longer video. Um... And also, if you're interested in working with me, I would love to connect with you through a psychic wisdom or spiritual healing session. Please visit my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. Thank you for watching my video and thank you for supporting my channel.